Hi and welcome to RC Models and this the second video in the series which I'm doing on converting the Bruder Cat Skid Loader to full RC control. The first video was just a short piece which I did to post on Facebook and in the second video I'm going to be going over the full prototype including how I did it. There will be follow up build videos which I'm going to make in due course. Without further ado let's get on with showing you how this works and how I made it. For the radio control, I'm actually using my old DX8 transmitter, and this is quite good because it's got the basic programming mixes which I needed to do it with. Again, in the future build videos, I'll probably do a whole segment on the radio control mixes. But the one which I wanted to show you first was the bucket elevation. So when the stick on the left is moved down, the arm raises and hopefully you'll notice that the bucket stays level. So if I were to put a load into the bucket and then I was to raise the arm, it actually all stays in there until the point at which I want to tip it. When controlling the wheels, I've actually got a speed controller linked to each of the pairs of wheels on each side so that when I push the right stick up, the loader just moves forward or indeed backwards if I pull it down and if I push it to one side or the other it will cause it to turn and if I'm going forward I can actually steer it as it goes along. The loader is actually very controllable but that's basically down to the choice of motor and gearbox ratios which I used and I'll come on to that in a minute. So let's have a quick look at what's going on inside. Pulling off the back, which comes off fairly easily, you'll see that I've got a little 500 milliamp power 7.4 volt LiPo tucked in there. And this hatch here actually comes off quite easily too, so the battery could be inserted from above if you wanted to. I've got switches mounted on each side. The reason why there are two switches is because there are actually two speed controllers in there. Underneath, I've put a piece of lead just to give it a little bit more weight and to make it a little bit more stable when you've got a load on the front. So I'll just take this off. Right, so that's the battery which I'm using. It is an obsolete one, but later batteries have been made. I think they've probably got higher capacity. You've really just got to watch that it will actually fit in the space. So underneath here, you can see I've got an orange Spectrum compatible receiver in there. I just put the smallest one which I had lying around. Four N20 gearbox motors, and these are the 100 RPM ones. I tried the 200 and the thing flew around. And to be quite honest, it wasn't really controllable enough. The wheels are my usual custom conversion job with the M8 bolts. There's a four mil copper tube sleeve in there and this just goes straight onto the three mil shafts for the N20 motors. I've tried to keep the wiring reasonably neat. It looks a bit messy there, but that's all just tucked away. I'll just pop the cage off here. Which actually comes off easily enough. Again, in the build, I'll take you through all of that. Just take Brood Lady out for a moment. One of the biggest challenges with the build was to actually retain this whole area without using any of it for electronics or components and I just about managed to do that. Underneath the seat, the two switches that I was using on the outside plus I got two of those little low cost 10 amp speed controllers taped together. I was able to retain these pistons and actually I can probably retain one of the ones on the front and I might do that in the, in the build video. Let's undo this for a moment. And so what I managed to do was I managed to put a 20 kilogram servo, which is quite strong, metal geared one, low cost one, but very strong. I was able to keep this mechanism quite separate and that just slots in the top there. At the other end for the bucket, I've actually got a small metal geared digital Hobby King servo, which I trimmed the tabs off and that is actually epoxied to the back of the plate here. You can see how the servo arm there is being used to move it up and down. Very similar fashion to what's going on here with the arm 
for the 20 kilogram servo there. I was able to keep the glue away from the front of this piece here, which meant that I was able to retain the ability to take off the bucket, like so. And if I want to put on the forklift arms, like that. Okay, I think that that's the main features of the build described. I'm going to have to put this thing back together again. I've been really happy with how this one runs and actually it's really nice just to use to be quite honest. I think that as a first brood conversion this is probably quite good. The real challenge obviously is to try and get the components into such a small area. The cost of the components isn't high and really the key to this build is to be very very accurate when you're carving or you're cutting any of the pieces of plastic. I think really that's all I've got to say about the prototype. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and push the little bell thing to get notifications so you can see when I'm making new videos. Please keep those comments coming. I really do enjoy hearing what you've got to say and answering the questions that you've got. Enjoy the rest of the video. I'm going to put some running videos on here now. And once again, thank you very much for watching.